In the vibrant landscape of Mexico, a nation celebrated for its exquisite cuisine, idyllic weather, and the friendly warmth of its people, lies a paradox. This country, often associated with the more relaxed and enjoyable aspects of the good life, is also marked by a relentless struggle for power within its society. It's a place where contrasts don't just exist, they thrive, painting a picture of a nation perpetually balancing between joy and strife. Similarly, the Middle East stands as a region of dichotomies. It's a land where the 21st century has ushered in unprecedented wealth, opulence, and business opportunities. Yet it remains a place often synonymous with political unrest and a history of its citizens moving elsewhere to seek new horizons. Between these two legendary cultures on either side of the Atlantic emerges a remarkable story of a family that embodies the essence of both these worlds, deftly maneuvering away from crushing instability to the heights of unfathomable wealth and almost unmatched political power. Today we tell their full story, from the sand-swept shores of Lebanon to the picturesque mountain peaks sloping through Mexico City to the very top of any list containing the world's richest families as we describe. The Slims, the Middle Eastern family who own Mexico. In the world of high-flying billionaires, few soar as high as Carlos Slim and his family. With a staggering net worth hovering around $99.1 billion, the Slims aren't just rich, they're a financial juggernaut and a force to be reckoned with. At the heart of this empire lies Carlos Slim, a titan of industry whose Midas touch has turned everything from telecoms to retail into gold. And the secret behind this colossal fortune is, for starts, Slim's ownership in America Mobile, Latin America's premier mobile phone operator, playing a pivotal role. But that's just the beginning. His investment tentacles stretch far and wide from Grupo Caso, a conglomerate dabbling in everything from construction to automotive to banking giant Grupo Financiero in Bursa. And even the iconic New York Times finds itself within Slim's vast portfolio. But it's not just businesses. Carlos Slim has an eye for real estate too. Take the Benjamin N. Duke House, a Gilded Age architectural gem in New York City snapped up by Slim for a cool $44 million and now valued at an eye-watering $80 million. This isn't just a house, it's a statement, a piece of history, an architectural marvel that boasts eight bedrooms and ten bathrooms, all stitched together with a grand staircase. But Slim's taste for luxury doesn't stop at real estate. His car collection is nothing short of spectacular. Mexico's billionaire boss can often be found in a Bentley Continental flying spur, with his garage also housing treasures like a Navy Mercedes 4x4 and a vintage Cadillac 1941. But don't be fooled by these sometime opulent road machines. Slim is mostly known for his surprisingly modest driving habits, preferring to keep his car choices low-key for day-to-day -day use. And then there's the Oster, Slim's floating palace. A 52-meter yacht from the esteemed feedship fleet the Oster is a marvel of modern engineering, boasting a steel hull and an aluminum superstructure. Costing, for him, a mere $40 million, it's a floating reminder of Slim's love for the finer things in life. Yet, amidst this grandeur, Carlos Slim is a study in contrasts. Despite his unfathomable wealth, he leads a surprisingly modest life in Mexico City. He drives himself to work, a rare sight in a country plagued by kidnappings and he's also a man of culture, owning a museum that houses his collection of relics and artifacts. But make no mistake, Carlos Slim's influence isn't confined to the boardroom. He's a towering figure in Mexico's social and political spheres. His business acumen and political connections have made him a kingmaker of sorts, blurring the lines between corporate and political power. As for the Slim legacy, it's in safe hands. Carlos Slim's progeny, led by eldest son Carlos Slim Domit, are steering the ship, ensuring the family's business empire not only endures but thrives. However, the most interesting thing about the Slim family isn't their toys and tantalizing assets. It's their extremely unique background in the exclusive 0.001%. Indeed, in the intricate mosaic of global business moguls, the Slim family lineage has a story as rich as their empire starting way back when on the dusty shores of Ottoman-ruled Lebanon. 
Let's rewind back to 19th century Ottoman-ruled Lebanon, a place that certainly wasn't the nation we know today. It was here, in this cradle of ancient civilizations, where Slim's maternal grandparents, Saleh or Jose, Antonio Helou and Wadiha or Emilia Alexandra Atamutran emerged. During their life, Carlos Slim's grandparents would set sail for Mexico, embedding themselves in the rich, unique land of Parol Chihuahua, a bustling hub of mineral wealth. Here, their daughter, Linda Helou, the mother of Carlos Slim, was born into this blend of Lebanese spirit and Mexican industriousness, forming a bridge between two vibrant cultures. You see, as the 20th century dawned, waves of Lebanese fleeing Ottoman conscription had found solace in Mexico. Thus, Carlos Slim's mother wasn't the only ancestor of the future multi-billionaire Slim family to help build this mighty lineage. Among the additional Lebanese immigrants who came during this time was Julian Slim Haddad, Carlos's father, who at 14 embarked on a journey from Lebanon to Mexico. Julian, embodying the Lebanese immigrant ethos, started humbly as a dry goods trader and his entrepreneurial spirit soon bore fruit, culminating in the opening of La Estrella de Oriente in 1911, a milestone in his burgeoning retail career. Then, 1926 saw Julian unite with the aforementioned Linda Helou, intertwining two Lebanese immigrant families and strengthening their foothold in Mexican society. This union was more than a marriage. It was a fusion of cultural and commercial legacies. Next, the Roaring Twenties and Thirties were a period of expansion for Julian, who delved into real estate, riding the wave of Mexico City's growth. His astuteness in acquiring key properties laid the foundation for a real estate empire that flourished in post-revolutionary Mexico. Consequently, Julian wasn't just a businessman. He was a mentor to his children, especially Carlos. Therefore, young Carlos would soon become no stranger to the nuances of trade and investment. However, to get the full picture of the childhood of the $99 billion Middle Eastern mogul who rules the Mexican business world, we must start at the beginning where on the rocky streets of Mexico City, a young boy destined for greatness came into the world. On the 28th of January, 1940, Carlos Slim Helou's journey to becoming one of the richest men in the world began humbly in the heart of Mexico's capital city. And from his early days, it was evident that Carlos was not your average child. By 12, he had already stepped into the world of finance, buying shares in the Bank of Mexico but this early dive into finance wasn't just a youthful whim. It was a clear indicator of his burgeoning business acumen. Under the guidance of his father, who was a firm believer in financial literacy, Carlos and his siblings were introduced to the world of finance. Each child received a ledger to keep track of their expenses, a practice that undoubtedly shaped Carlos's understanding of money management and was perhaps unknowingly similar to the famous childhood ledgers of none other than a young John D. Rockefeller himself. Now, even as a teenager, Carlo Slim's flair for numbers was already apparent, and by 15, he was already a shareholder in Mexico's largest bank. However, tragically, at the age of 13, Carlos's father passed away. This loss marked a turning point in his life, thrusting upon him a sense of responsibility and shaping his future endeavors in the business world. But Carlos's academic path was as strategic as his business ventures. He chose to study civil engineering at the National Autonomous University of Mexico, or UNAM, a discipline that would later play a pivotal role in his business dealings. You see, Slim's decision to study civil engineering was far from random. It was a calculated move that would provide him with a unique perspective in the business arena, and his expertise in mathematics and linear programming, honed during his engineering studies, gave him an edge in dissecting financial statements and understanding market trends. Simultaneously, his academic pursuits were paralleled by practical forays into the world of investment, as he began dabbling in stocks and real estate. It was thus, during his university years, that Carlos laid the first stone of his business empire, starting with a stock brokerage, Invasora Bursatil. Upon graduating in 1961, Carlos Slim had not only acquired an engineering degree, but had also set the stage for his ascent in the business world. His investments were diverse, ranging across various sectors, laying the groundwork for what would become the conglomerate Grupo Carso. Thus, in 1965, Carlos Slim began to construct the edifice of Grupo Carso, and at 25, 
he was already laying the bricks of his future empire. He incorporated Immobiliaria Caso in January 1966, a mere three months before tying the knot with Sumaya Domit Gemayel, and the name Caso itself. A blend of Carlos and Sumaya's names symbolizes the union of personal and professional aspirations that would drive Slim's relentless pursuit of business excellence. So in the later half of the swinging 60s, while the world was busy with moon landings and rock and roll, Carlos Slim was quietly reshaping Mexico's economic landscape. Grupo Carso, his brainchild, wasn't just diversifying, it was rewriting the rules of business. Slim, with an eagle's eye for potential, transformed real estate and construction into realms of untapped possibilities. As the 70s dawned, Slim's canvas broadened, encompassing the gritty world of mining and the intricate webs of finance. Yet, the true brilliance of this business titan came to light in the 1982 economic turmoil. While others saw doom, Slim saw a sale of a lifetime. He embarked on an acquisition spree, reminiscent of a grand strategist in a global game of monopoly. From retail giants like Sanborns to significant stakes in global firms, Slim collected assets like a connoisseur amasses art. Then, while the 1990s brought with them the dawn of the digital age and for Slim, the jewel in the crown, Telmex, Mexico's primary telecommunications company. This $1.76 billion acquisition was not just a transaction, it was a strategic masterstroke, propelling Slim into the telecom limelight. And under his guidance, Telmex transformed from a national player into a telecommunications juggernaut. It revamped its infrastructure, embraced the internet, and became Mexico's digital gateway. But as the 20th century bowed out, Slim's vision soared beyond Mexico's borders. Telmex, by then a telecom titan, embarked on a conquest of the Americas. And this expansion wasn't mere growth, it was a demonstration of Slim's global ambition. From Central America to the United States, and then to the heart of Brazil and Chile, Slim was not just connecting people, he was connecting worlds. It was at this time that Carlos Slim and his burgeoning family would start reaching their apex. But first, they would have to diversify their plans even more than the world ever thought imaginable. In the early 2000s, while the rest of us were grappling with the dawn of the internet age, Slim was busy etching his name in the echelons of the ultra-rich. In the year 2000, Forbes famously took note, but let's be honest, they were just stating the obvious. By 2005, Slim's empire was more than a shopping list of companies. It was a veritable smorgasbord of business ingenuity. Retail, technology, finance, you name it, he owned a slice of it. Indeed, his portfolio was like a well-seasoned paella, with a bit of everything tossed in, including a dash of Volaris, the Mexican airline. By then, his wealth wasn't just impressive. It was the stuff of legend, thanks to his conglomerate, Grupo Carso, and a telecom empire, featuring America Mobile, Telcel, and ISP Telmex. Come 2007, Slim did the financial equivalent of a moonwalk past Bill Gates, snagging the title of the world's richest man with a cool $59 billion. At this time, Slim's grip on the Mexican stock exchange was so tight, it was as if he'd confused it for a stress ball. With a third of the market under his belt, his dominance in telecom was akin to a Shakespearean king, albeit one facing murmurs of monopoly. The next decade saw Slim dip his toes into infrastructure, like a seasoned chef trying his hand at a new recipe, with his infrastructure company bagging contracts to build roads. And the buzz was that he was eyeing the construction of Mexico City's new airport terminal. Infrastructure, after all, is the backbone of any economy, and Slim was not one to miss a vertebrate. Then, 2012 was when Slim decided to play Santa, but instead of toys, he brought the Carlos Slim Foundation to the table, aiming to uplift Mexico and Latin America through education and technology. The second half of the 2010s witnessed Slim's version of a world tour, taking America Movil on a Euro-American adventure, beefing up his stake in Telecom Austria AG and becoming the largest investor in the New York Times. However, I think we can all say that a ton of this individual success for Carlos Slim wouldn't have been possible without the help of his wife and children, not only the backbone of his personal life, but the future of the Slim family empire. Let's investigate their backstory to get a better understanding of how this potential future old money family maintains a firm grasp on their generational wealth. 
In 1967, Carlos Slim married Sumaya Domit, and let's just say it wasn't your average walk down the aisle. This union wasn't just about swapping rings. It was the start of a saga where love and business waltzed in harmony. Fast forward to 1970, and the Slim household was bustling with three kids, and family wasn't just a word for them. It was their cornerstone. You see, Sumaya Domit was no ordinary better half. She was a dynamo in her own right, a philanthropist, an art patron, a woman whose heart was as big as her husband's bank account. She wasn't just handing out charity, she was changing lives, from supporting students and artists to laying down the law for organ donation. And if you're wondering why the big push for organ donation, let's just say she had skin in the game, having braved a kidney transplant herself. But her piece de resistance was the Museo Sumaya, a museum that is a love letter in concrete and steel from Carlos to Sumaya. Stuffed with art that would make even the snobbiest of connoisseurs nod in approval, it was a fitting tribute to a woman whose taste in art was as refined as her sense of philanthropy. 1999 sadly brought a curtain call to Sumaya Domit's life, ending a 33-year matrimonial marathon with Carlos. But even in the face of tragedy, as the millennium turned, the Slim clan wasn't just sitting on their laurels. 2000 saw Carlos's children stepping into the corporate coliseum, armored and ready. And this wasn't simple nepotism. This was strategic dynasty building, Slim style. Grupo, Carso, Telmex. You name it, they were there, learning to steer the ship. By 2010, Carlos's boys weren't just filling daddy's shoes, they were sprinting in them. Carlos Jr., the big brother, was juggling chairmanships while Patrick and Marco Antonio were not far behind, carving their own niches. We might say that Carlos Sr.'s mantra was something like, I'm not just leaving you a fortune, I'm leaving you a legacy to uphold. But as the 2020s roll on, the rumblings about who will inherit Slim's economic throne grow louder. It's a family affair, with Slim's now grown kids primed to take over an empire that sprawls across telecommunications, finance and retail, a trifecta of power and prosperity. First, Carlos Slim Domi, the eldest son, is not just warming a seat, he's the chairman of America Mobile, Grupo Sanborns, Telefonos de Mexico and Grupo Carso. Then there's Marco Antonio Slim Domit, steering Grupo Financiero in Bursa and several other financial juggernauts. And not to be outdone, Patrick Slim Domit plays a dual role, the chairman of Grupo Telvista and Sears Operadora Mexico, and CEO at Grupo Sanborns. But let's not forget the Slim daughters, Sumaya, Vanessa and Johanna, who are not just ornaments in this family portrait. They're at the forefront of the family's business and philanthropic endeavors. Vanessa Slim Dumit is not just a figurehead. She's the president of the Association for Improvement for Mexico and Latin America and directs wellness programs of the Carlos Slim Foundation and the Telmex Foundation. While Johanna Slim Dumit, the youngest, isn't just along for the ride, she's the director of the initial education program of the Carlos Slim Foundation and a board member of several companies. Thus, the Slim family's succession plan isn't a mere handover, it's a meticulously crafted relay race, ensuring the baton of wealth and influence doesn't drop. Indeed, in many family businesses, a clumsy succession can spell disaster, turning familial love into a Shakespearean tragedy, but not here. Carlos Slim, ever the strategist, is ensuring his successors are as prepared as they are privileged, armed with mentorship, training, and a clear line of communication. And then there's the other side of the coin. As with any tale of immense wealth and power, controversy is never far behind. Some view the Slims as symbols of Mexico's economic divide, while others raise eyebrows at their philanthropic motivations. However, undeterred by criticism, the Slims continue their quest to blend business with benevolence, aiming to cement a legacy that's not just wealthy but also worthy. As the future unfolds, the Slims stand poised to continue their domination of Mexico's economic landscape, attempting to intertwine their business ventures and philanthropic efforts to shape the nation's destiny. And now, we'd like to see you in the comments. What is your personal opinion on the Slim family? Tell us your thoughts on their immense wealth, familial structure and personal history as some of the most successful immigrants of all time to any country in the world. We look forward to your thoughts. And thanks again for joining us for another episode of Old Money Luxury. Cheers, until next time.